Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining this evening's town hall, hosted by Senator Dave Cortese, who represents State Senate District 15, which encompasses parts of Cupertino, Los Gatos, Campbell, Saratoga, Monte Sereno, San Jose, and more. My name is Roy Tongalaba, District Representative with the Office of Senator Cortese, and I will be tonight's moderator. Firstly, I want attendees to know that this town hall is being live streamed with code closed captioning options available through Senator Cortez's website and Facebook page. Later in the program, there will be time for Q&A with the audience uh, through the Zoom Q&A function down below. So feel free to submit all of your questions. We're gonna, get, we're gonna try and get to each one of them. Um, and as always, if we do not have time to answer all of your questions, uh, you can certainly follow up with our office. Tonight's town hall, uh, we will focus on keeping our neighborhoods clean together. And we'll, we'll hear directly from a panel of representatives of the California Department of Transportation, also known as Caltrans, uh, the City of San Jose Department of Parks, Recreation and Neighborhood Services, Beautify SJ, and lastly, the Santa Clara County Consumer and Environmental Protection Agency for a discussion on the several governmental resources and services available to our communities and ensuring our neighborhoods and streets stay clean. Uh, in the interest of allowing our panelists enough time, as well as enough time for questions, uh, I will turn it over to this evening's first speaker, uh, Senator Dave Cortez. Senator Cortez, please take it away. Well, thank you, Roy, and thank you everyone who's uh, joined us. It looks like um, a good participation today. I, I appreciate very much the panelists that are here um, spending part of their evening with us um, from state agencies as well as the city of San Jose and County of Santa Clara. So uh, much appreciated, and I know uh, people will uh, continue to view this um, webcast, if you will, um, through live streaming and through um, through our website and, and other channels. Um, we're very, very um, grateful for the community input we receive each week on any number of issues. And I will tell you that keeping our neighborhoods clean uh, of litter and pollution in general ranks right up there at the top. Um, and thus, I guess I should say, uh, our uh, title for, for tonight's event, Keeping Our Neighborhoods Clean Together, because we do think um, there's plenty of responsibility to go around. And uh, as we receive hundreds of, of inquiries pertaining to maintenance of waste issues in Senate District 15, rest assured that we respond, um, we pursue, and um, we should say that as pleased as we are that Caltrans uh, response uh, or that the local governments respond when we contact them as a matter of constituent services, uh, know that we're not contacting them um, as some sort of bureaucrats or allies or uh, as some sort of government agency ourselves. Uh, we really take on the role of constituent services and constituent response. So in a way you could say we're kind of pestering <laughs> or bugging them a little bit. Um, and more than a little bit, I think uh, if, if they were being very candid, they'd, they'd say, hey, look, uh, these elected officials, including our state senator, um, are, are on us all the time about prioritizing hotspots and cleanup areas, uh, whether those be highway interchanges or encampments that need to be dealt with or, or, or just a litter that's uh, accumulating in certain areas. Um, you know, as Roy mentioned, we can't have live questions asked in this format. At some point, we may go back to a format we used uh, in the past where we could actually have people call in uh, or otherwise uh, communicate with us, you know, directly by audio. Um, but as Roy said, uh, make sure that you get our questions, your questions to us one way or the other. Um, we get plenty during the week every week, but we want to hear yours and want to hear suggestions. I, I spent some time um, uh, with um, uh, a good friend and constituent uh, who gives us suggestions from time to time on these issues. Um, and over the years, um, Don Eberhard, uh, who's worked with volunteers across the county um, on issues like litter cleanup and other things, 
Um, and it's important for me to hear from time to time uh, people's suggestion, you know, fresh set of eyes on things. And uh, I'll talk some more about one of Don's suggestions later on before I conclude here. Um, if you can give your email address, if you're comfortable doing that, um, when you submit a question, um, do that uh, just to make sure that if we don't get to it today, tomorrow, somebody can respond. But uh, I trust that Roy has our email address up there. And uh, even if it's tomorrow or the next day that you email us your afterthoughts after this webinar, uh, we, we really want to hear from you. Um, <clears throat> more specifically, let me speak to who our guest speakers are. They do respect, they do represent these respective government agencies that I talked about. Uh, Leah Boudou and Earl Sherman III from the State Department of Transportation, otherwise known as Caltrans by most people. Elizabeth Castro and Daniel Lazo with Beautify San Jose in the city of San Jose. And Vanessa Marquedejas, um, Michelle Young and Billy Poop for, with the Consumer Environmental Protection Agency in the county. As your state senator, I've worked to secure $2 million of funding in last year's budget to assist, that's the state budget, to assist local jurisdictions with the removal of trash and debris from local streets and long state highways in Santa Clara County. Is that enough? No, I'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment as well. But in addition to those beautification efforts, there have also been unprecedented state investments in recent years uh, to address the state's homelessness crisis. And I mentioned that, of course, because of the connection between some of what we see out there in terms of, uh, of litter and debris um, and encampments, especially during the pandemic where they, they weren't being moved and people, um, there were growing numbers of, of the unhoused who uh, were just essentially stuck in one place. Um, that has led to, I think, what looks like blight to, to many of us. Um, but keep in mind that on that front, the state has included a historic $12 billion toward Project Room Key, which is a governor's plan to confront homelessness at its core. And it will help tens of thousands of people to get off the streets up and down the state. That's shelter money. That's actual shelter money. Um, in addition, um, the biggest uh, homeless housing increase in the state's history with 46,000 new homeless housing units that's in the budget, seven billion uh, for additional home key acquisitions. That's the purchasing of existing structures like motels and things like that. 1.75 billion to build thousands of affordable homes. Obviously that's needed. 447 million to address student homelessness at UC, CSU and CC and community colleges. I have it abbreviated here. Um, and keep in mind that we ran a bill this last session, which we'll bring back again next year, meaning January, just a few months from now, um, to address student homelessness. You know, we're graduating somewhere around 15,000 high school seniors in the state of California every year who are homeless. That means we're graduating them into continued homelessness if we don't do something about that. Um, we have to do something about that. We need to start addressing these issues at the earliest stage. And if it's high school seniors who are graduating without any place to live, that's a pretty early stage to catch things. $150 million to stabilize and rehouse Project Room Key clients. Uh, we talked about Project Room Key a moment ago. I did. Um, but additional money for continued stabilization so people don't go into a shelter and then just be released right back out again without help, um, otherwise known as wraparound services. 1.85 billion in new housing for homeless families. So that is a permanent supportive housing for homeless families. And 1.6 billion in rental support and homeless prevention for families. Uh, $40 million on top of that in grants to local government. So you can see, although we had a record surplus in the state, thanks to you taxpayers and, and frankly, corporate taxpayers who are paying record uh, amounts of, of taxes based on their prosperity, uh, you can see that we're putting a lot of that money back into uh, these issues that, as I said, are tethered together in many ways. Uh, beautification, litter, and homelessness are not isolated or siloed issues. Um, sometimes they are, 
but much of the time today, of course, they're very connected. Um, there's another $1.5 billion in this budget to transform public spaces and clean public spaces near highways, which has been a concern many of you have shared with my office. And in fact, uh, that probably occupies most of the time uh, in our, our discussions uh, week, week in and week out, uh, particularly with Caltrans and the city of San Jose um, and some of the other cities, the county itself. So look, there needs to be more. Um, I just want to say something that maybe the agencies themselves might not say. Um, the maintenance crews, um, in my opinion, are shorthanded. We have 2 million people in this county and we have relatively small numbers of, of maintenance personnel rotating around to deal with issues uh, that you're seeing out there every day. Uh, so we need to invest. That's up to me as a state senator and to my colleagues in the state Senate and the state assembly uh, and to the governor to keep investing, uh, not just in these grants and one-time programs and project room key, but also in the actual personnel and increasing the personnel that's out there so that they can be in more places at one time. Um, people have their limitations. We need to add on. Um, and I will fight. Uh, for that funding. I want you to know that I, you know, budget augmentations like I just talked about, are the ones that I've sought as earmarks for our county in this regard, for me are just the beginning. Um, I will, um, and I'm on the, the budget subcommittee that deals with transportation, um, I will do whatever I can to get more funding toward Caltrans uh, and local jurisdictions in their efforts to maintain roads, highways, creeks, and waterways, and obviously that maintenance, including specifically um, cleanup maintenance. Um, you know, this is about our quality of life. And I've always said, at least in my time as, as a public official, that this beautiful valley that we live in has attracted a lot of people here, including my family generations back, because of the combination of prosperity and quality of life. The opportunity for prosperity and quality of life. Um, to the extent that these basic issues that we're talking about today negatively impact our quality of life, um, I know it's emotional for everyone because it feels like we're losing um, what's attracted many of us to this beautiful place in the first place. So we can do better. And one of the things um, my friend and, and constituent, and I should say, he's not, he, he may be a friend, but he's not easy on me. Uh, talked about, and I think he's absolutely right, is um, something that we were calling reverse education, literacy. It's not really reverse education. That would probably be de-education. But talking about combining climate literacy um, with um, literacy in terms of beautification of our communities um, with our young people um, and creating sensitivity and compassion in our education system um, and a commitment um, in the minds of young people now as to what we need to do to house people in the future. Um, that's something that I've already been working on on the climate side. Um, we pushed very, very hard last year for budget money um, and for um, legislation um, that would install climate literacy. Think of it as pollution literacy um, into the curriculum in our schools. You would think that would already exist by now. It doesn't. Um, and so we need to do that. Uh, and, you know, we need to call on everyone uh, to do their part. Uh, we can't just push another burden on the next generation. We can't just expect uh, a handful of Caltrans employees to deal with an overwhelming amount of, of litter and encampments and things that are going on that are a reflection of uh, a greater problem right now with society. We need to invest, but we also need to help out. And I thank so many of you for doing that. Uh, just over the weekend on Mount Hamilton Road, which happens to be a state highway in the east side of the district, Highway 130, I slowed down on a drive where I was actually uh, taking into account litter uh, on the highway. It's a scenic highway. And I came across a couple in their own, in their own car a late model sedan who had stopped uh, in a turnout with plastic bags and were doing their own cleanup. 
Um, is that your obligation as a citizen, as a resident? No. Um, is it something that we could probably all pitch in and do a little more of? Probably yes. Um, so let's rebuild that part of our, our own culture and education about what our responsibility is and let's make sure our children are getting the right message in school as well. In the meantime, as I said, I'll keep fighting for dollars in the budget um, for personnel increases. That's what I mean by augmentation and uh, making sure we have enough crews out there in a, in a valley of 2 million people and enough grants to our local governments to get the job done. Thank you so much for joining us today. And um, we look forward to your questions and hopefully we can answer many of them tonight, but we'll make sure all of them get answered one way or the other um, in the days ahead. Thank you again. And I'll turn it back to you, Roy. Thank you, Senator Cortez, for your insight and for your leadership in the district and within the state legislature. Uh, before I turn it over to our first guest speaker, uh, I want to remind folks uh, that the Q&A function is down below. Um, and if we aren't able to get to all of your questions, please feel free to follow up with our office at senator.cortezzi at scn.ca.gov. Um, and now, now it is with great pleasure that I turn it over to our first guest speaker, Leah Boudou, Deputy District Director with Calchans. Hello and uh, good evening. I'm really excited to be here and I um, really, I am inspired <laughs> Senator Cortese by your, your uh, wise words and I, I'm really excited to be here in partnership with all of you and with the other um, speakers tonight with Beautify SJ and SEC EPA. Um, I think we have a lot to share and probably a little time, so let me get into it. I'm Leah Boudou, the district deputy district D director of maintenance for Caltrans, and I am. Um, I have a few slides born of um, uh, feedback that we've received from from your constituents, uh, from um, uh, our customer survey requests and different ways that the public engages with us. And so we're really happy to present today. I have an outline of some of the things that I'll be running through. Um, one of the things is uh, our, the jurisdiction, just you know, figuring out what's Caltrans and what is other. Um, so I'll run through and I'll provide some ways that you can contact us and clarify those things. But in general, Caltrans, uh, is the state highway system as well as the interstate. We're responsible for all of the maintenance and rehab and preservation and repair of those areas. Um, our, our foundational principles are based on safety. So our first priority is to make safe conditions of all of our assets. Secondary is the preservation, which is the repair and rehabilitation. And third, might be the focus of what we're talking about today is the service of it. You know, litter removal, graffiti removal, sweeping and cleaning, um, encampment cleanups as well. So uh, uh, another item that I'll be covering is maintenance efforts. What efforts is maintenance in Caltrans uh, putting forth in this endeavor, especially in the Santa Clara County area? Um, and also, I'll speak a bit about our partnerships that we have. Um, much like the Senator laid out, uh, we cannot do this alone. And we do engage in partnerships to be more efficient and effective and um, make sure that, well, we strive to deliver the, the service that is uh, asked of us. Um, so jumping into the litter abatement efforts, uh, we use maintenance crews, um, tiny and but mighty as they might be. We also uh, augment our, our crews with uh, special people programs. It's a, a way that we reach out to at-risk people who maybe need a second chance at the job market. Um, and, and we have contracts with special programs that provide a uh, staff set. Uh, assist our maintenance crews. We also have partnerships with uh, 
say San Jose, CTA, other, other local or county agencies. And we also have some small contracts for special items where um, it's a very difficult um, access for our litter abatement. So just a little kind of focus on our, our litter abatement efforts. Um, we have in um, a list of hot spots that through our regular inspection and assessment of, of the county and the cities that we found, as well as with feedback from San Jose and, and as I said before, our customer service requests. Um, then specifically about efforts, um, there's, um, there's a clear challenge. There is an abundance of litter. And as the Senator said, only so many staff hours that we can apply to it. So we're constantly trying to find ways to be innovative. And the, the latest innovation we've had is, is this litter blitz is what we call it, where we identify key corridors and we really develop traffic plans where we shut things down and we try and get after it. Now it, it provides a, a bit of traffic impact, but we're hoping that the benefit outweighs um, the uh, impact to the traveling public. Um, another thing that we've got going on are litter events with our, um, with again, with our partnerships, we've engaged in at least six or seven uh, litter events this year um, from, from BTA to the mayor of Cupertino, we've engaged in partnerships. And this is a way um, typically for us as Caltrans to interact with the communities that we serve. It's very difficult for us to provide that direct access to, to um, litter abatement, but through our partners and their, and their assistance, we're able to do that. And one thing I want to pull, pull out here, um, just in terms of the, the lift that we're talking about when it comes to litter abatement in the state highway system, here in the nine Bay Area counties is what makes up District 4. This past year, um, the maintenance expenditures for all nine Bay Area counties for just litter and abatement have been about 23% of what we spend for all of our maintenance. So I laid out before, maintenance is responsible for uh, safety. So say making sure we don't have potholes, making sure we have guardrails up. So safety items, preservation, again, potholes, repairs, minimal repairs, and then our, our service items, right? Service items would be litter. In Santa Clara County this year, we spent 37% of our maintenance expenditures on litter, debris, and graffiti. I would really um, just like to lift that up to everyone. The system that we have is not for lack of, of effort, but we're willing to put more effort in. Um, and, and where we've been able to do that is with our Clean California program. So this is a three-year program. We're one year in. It is to uh, eradicate litter. It is to enhance the, the beauty of our state highway system. It is to educate and it, it, it is to um, engage public as well. So we have 16 beautification projects that we, we were able to uh, get for District 4, um, four of them in the San Jose, Santa Clara area. I believe we've got a, a, a refresh of a park. We've got some mural and art projects um, in, in those, those four. We, we host dump days as a part of Clean California as well. So we hosted two, two of them in, in collaboration with San Jose just this past year. We, I, I highlighted the six volunteer events that were listed earlier. And for 22, 23, we're looking forward to more. As I said before, we have an engagement component and local grants allow us to um, engage with the local communities, provide funding for projects that they find will add the most value to their communities. Um, we also have a Clean California Maintenance Agreement, which is uh, a way for 
the department to allow a city or a county to pick a location that they really want to amplify and put their stamp on and provide maintenance support for. And um, we, we've got it for litter and graffiti abatement and it, it's pending, it should roll out any day. So more resources towards litter abatement. And then the last thing, um, back to the people, we're continuing to have job fairs um, and reach out to have uh, to to explore possibilities for partnerships and job, job fairs with the local communities we serve. So just a little bit more, uh, Clean California has been really successful. If you can see here, over 132,000 cubic yards of litter were collected this year. That uh, made our target each year we have a target at and it unfortunately increases increases as the years go on um, for this three-year program but just to in in put it all in perspective we captured 22,000 cubic yards in santa clara county that's about 1500 garbage trucks worth of, of litter um, for graffiti we had about 820,000 square feet. That's about 1,300 billboard size pieces of, of uh, graffiti that we cleared. Um, so so I, I, I spoke about Clean California. That's my segue to partnerships. Um, Clean California is just one way we're, we're engaging, we're reaching out, and we're, we're able to expose the world to all the things that Caltrans has and you know attract more partners and hope that that's a springboard to future. Um, I spoke a little bit about Clean California maintenance agreements, but in general, each city uh, has an opportunity, each county has an opportunity to engage in a, a maintenance agreement with us. And and we provide, you know, um, we're, we're, we're able to more, uh, give more free reign to those locals to, to maintain their areas. We're, we're working with the VTA on the Zero Litter Initiative, which I'm really excited about. Through that, we've, we've, we've been able to kind of bolster our, our uh, Clean California activities as well. Um, Beautify SJ and SJ, I can't say enough. Uh, I'll speak to you later. Um, the, the partnership we have with the cities and the counties as we engage in uh, uh, um, uh, encampment removal and cleanup is, is paramount. They're uh, a huge partner and we're looking to interface with co communities in the most humane way possible. And so without services, um, uh, it's very hard for us to move forward with the cleaning. Um, so let me jump to how to get to us. And I'm gonna spend a little bit of time on this. So we have three different platforms that you can reach us um, through our website, uh, csr.dot.ca.gov. We have a, a phone line, it's 510-286-6173 or you can send us an email at caltrans.d4 at dot.ca.gov. Now, with those resources, I wanna tell you what happens if you engage with us. The system, this system is the fastest and most efficient way for us to handle your request. It allows us to track and log and ensure that it gets to the appropriate parties to come to a resolution in the, in the quickest way possible. So I, I can't stress enough, if you have a non-emergency event, please use this system. Um, we look at it and, and I'll show you another piece of data that it's, it's challenging, but I need to show it to you. Um, just next, but I, I, I just wanted to hammer in though that these CSRs, these customer service requests, we are, are off also, it's a metric for us, our response. We strive to respond to everything within the first 30 days of receiving them. And I will show you the next thing that will show you why uh, 30 days is, is, is not more than a notion. So if you see here, we, I don't know if you can read it if it's too, uh, small the text, but 
I have a list of all the different categories of the different customer service requests that we have, right? They go from graffiti, encampments, illegal dumping, litter and debris to lighting, um, you, you name it. So there'll be a drop down with categories that you can pick. And here the data is um, separated by city and the number of CSRs we've received. So you can see in, in this time period from January to September, we've received over a thousand for just those few cities. Now there are about, I think 101 cities in the nine Bay Area County. So just imagine the possibilities. So that said, here is a representation not necessarily of, I know everybody's probably looking at the 444 encampment CSRs we have. It's not necessarily the number of C, uh, encampments we have, but it also tracks how many times those particular uh, requests come in because we wanna address each and every request we receive. So, so, so the elephant in the room, I get it out of the way. Yes, we do. Um, we do put effort forth on encampment removals. It is a, a large task that we lean on our partners to get done. Um, this year, we've got about 91 total in the county, 81 of them in San Jose. Um, we're continuing to do so. As I say, it's in, in lockstep with the city, the county continuums of care. And we also work with our uh, local CHP now, um, how to contact us and 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 uh, how you can engage. Um, also, there is our Adopt a Highway program. So I've listed the contact person, um, Michael Javicki. He is the coordinator for the program, and we have certain locations up and down the highway that have been assessed to be safe for volunteers to volunteer. Um, their services to do various types of uh, adopt a highway. You can have a landscaping adopt a highway. You can have a litter and debris adoption. There, there are various levels to it. Um, there's training provided. You um, could could volunteer or adopt a spot as an individual or as an organization. Um, we have lots of different tools to provide to uh, assistant should you wish to engage. Um, also, another, I guess, shameless plug is, is how to get a job with the state. So if you're interested in joining our team and, and being a part of um, this, this great, wonderful responsibility of maintaining a safe, safe state highway system, um, we are always looking for people, um, especially in our maintenance um, team. Uh, so. There's the QR code for that. Now, last but not least is the broader look. I, I didn't get to so much that I wanted to share about our organization. I'm extremely proud of Caltrans and what we strive to do, um, but you can find on this website, our priorities, and you'll find that um, one of our chief priorities is you and your safety. And um, I, I hope this message comes to you and you're able to, you're engaged, but this website will also speak to a lot of other ways to get in touch with us. It'll show you a lot of different programs and initiatives we have. Right now, one of the banners is about the um, National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure. So how we're preparing to uh, deal with all of these electric vehicles that will be coming our way. So lots of different things to share with you. Um, that is all I have for tonight. Um, I hope I stayed sort of within my time, but thank you. Thank you so much, Leah, for that uh, comprehensive overview of Caltrans. Uh, I really appreciate you being here. Um, our next speaker I'd like to introduce uh, is Elizabeth Castro uh, and Daniel Lazo uh, with the City of San Jose, Beautify SJ. Please take it away. 
Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Senator Cortez and his office for inviting us to speak on Beautify SJ today. Uh, we will be presenting on the City of San Jose's Beautify SJ programs and services. Again, my name is Daniel Lazo, and I'm the Public Information Manager for the City of San Jose's Park Recreation Neighborhood Services Department, which now houses Beautify SJ. And I'm joined here with my colleague, Elizabeth Castro, um, who can introduce herself. Hi, everyone. My name is Elizabeth Castro. I'm the Public Information Representative um, with the City of San Jose, the Parks, Recreation, and Neighborhood Services Department, and the Community Services Division, which houses Beautify San Jose. And um, just to start off our presentation, um, we're going to talk about what is Beautify SJ. So Beautify SJ is an initiative to clean up and restore pride in our San Jose community. It was launched in 2017 under um, San Jose Mayor Licardo's leadership to unite the city and reclaim public spaces. Since then, it has brought together thousands of volunteers to remove trash from streets and waterways and support the efforts of residents to beautify their neighborhoods. Beautify SJ is now housed under um, the Parks Recreation Neighborhood Services Department, as we mentioned earlier, and is part of the Community Services Division. The program uses a multifaceted approach in keeping San Jose clean um, through the programs listed on the screen, which is graffiti removal, anti-litter efforts, neighborhood beautification efforts, um, including dumpster days and the Beautify SJ grant, um, illegal dumping removal, trash removal at homeless encampments, and blight reduction through our interagency coordination. And starting off with our graffiti removal program, um, our graffiti removal program abates over 2.5 million square feet of graffiti throughout San Jose every year. It removes graffiti on city owned property and public areas within 72 hours of being reported with a target of 24 hours for gang uh, offensive hate or hate speech related graffiti. Um, we also coordinate with 14 other jurisdictions to remove graffiti across San Jose and partner with local organizations on creating opportunities for public art and murals um, throughout the city. And the city of San Jose also works with the contractor to remove graffiti across the city and uh, addresses graffiti reported through the 311 app. Um, so residents can use the San Jose 311 app to report graffiti. Um, it, they can also report graffiti through the website, um, through email or through a phone call. And the QR code on the screen will lead you to the 311 website. And then our anti litter program is also part of Beautify SJ. The anti litter program hosts an average of 300 litter events per year. Um, anti litter efforts are coordinated through the city. Um, but are led by volunteers and supported by our Beautify SJ staff. Events are coordinated through volunteer partners, such as neighborhood associations, schools, nonprofits, and other community organizations. The anti-litter program also provides an anti-litter education uh, to San Jose residents by providing presentations to schools and community organizations about the effects of litter and encouraging them to get involved in their communities through volunteer opportunities. Uh, presentations also include litter pickup activities after, and residents can volunteer to lead um, either their own litter pickup events in, the, in their neighborhoods by contacting Beautify SJ, or they can also register to volunteer for litter cleanups already happening um, by visiting the anti-litter program website. Um, so QR code is also on the screen for that. And then we have additional park volunteer, uh, volunteer opportunities through our park program as well. So our park volunteer program um, hosts uh, weekly park volunteer events at local San Jose parks every month. Uh, there is no prior experience needed to participate and all tools and training are provided to volunteers. Um, residents can visit our volunteer website to see the monthly list of park volunteer events, register to volunteer, and also fill out the volunteer service agreement form um, to be able to participate in these events. And those are updated monthly. Um, each month we put out a new list um, with upcoming events that um, people can register for.
And also part of Beautify SJ is our neighborhood beautification program. Um, this program focuses on working with residents and community groups to host neighborhood dumpster events in their communities. Mm -hmm. The program hosts an average of 100 community dumpster events per year by partnering with neighborhood associations, council district offices, and residents throughout San Jose. The Beautify SJ grant is also part of the neighborhood beautification program and it provides funds from $300 up to $5,000 for neighborhood cleanup efforts, beautification projects, and neighborhood engagement opportunities in San Jose. The mission of the Beautify Estate Grant Program is to support residents' efforts at reclaiming their public space and to empower residents to demonstrate their pride in our city. The Beautify Estate Grant application is actually opening up again this year um, at the end of the month. And residents can visit our website for updated information on how to apply for the grant program. Um, RAPID is another um, program that's housed under Beautify SJ. It stands for Removing and Preventing Illegal Dumping. Since 2016, the RAPID program has responded to over 100,000 illegal dumping incidents while collecting over 28 million pounds of debris. Um, which is enough to fill over 930 garbage trucks. In the fiscal year um, of 2020 to 2021, um, the RAPID team responded to nearly 24,000 incidents citywide, collecting over 5 million pounds of debris, um, which is enough to fill nearly 170 garbage trucks. Um, the RAPID team uh, responds to reported illegal dumping incidents and provides services six days per week, and it also responds to those incidents within five business days. And residents can help um, our RAPID team keep San Jose clean by reporting illegal dumping through the 311 app, um, or online or also by calling. And um, residents can also report evidence such as photos or video of illegal dumping happening um, to or by email as well, and that information is on the 311 app as well. And to prevent illegal dumping, the City of San Jose um, Environmental Service Department provides free junk pickup services across the city through uh, partnering with recycling collection companies. Uh, residents can see the list of acceptable junk items and request a free junk pickup appointment by visiting the 311 website, um, and the QR code for that is also on the screen. So Beautify SJ also provides services to encampments throughout San Jose. The Beautify SJ Encampment Management Program provides proactive weekly trash services to approximately 200 active encampments. The team focuses on educating unhoused residents about the importance of bagging their own trash for weekly trash pickup, engaging with residents to connect them to services such as the Cash for Trash program, and collecting trash at the encampments. The Cash for Trash program was launched in November 2020 in an effort to reduce blight and engage residents in cleaning up public spaces. Since the launch, over 200 qualified unhoused residents participate in the program throughout encampment sites in San Jose, removing over 66,000 uh, pounds of trash. The city of San Jose has a trash service map that is available online, and the map shows the areas in the city receiving weekly trash services in each council district, as well as Cash for Trash sites. You can scan the code there. Uh, on the screen. The in, uh, go ahead. Next slide. Uh, the encampment management program also provides encampment cleanup services called escalated cleanups. During escalated cleanups, residents are allowed to stay at encampment sites if they cooperate with the good neighbor rules, which I'll mention later on. For example, this would entail uh, maintaining their encampment in a 12 by 12 foot uh, area and not being with uh, in the following setback areas, which I will touch on more. Um, again, during escalated cleanup, city staff would be uh, removing trash and debris from the encampments, working with the unhoused residents to scale down the size of encampments and enroll unhoused residents in trash programs and other resources. There are no abatements or uh, people are not being moved during these escalated cleanups. If needed, the encampment management program may also abate encampments. Encampments are abated if they are within the setback areas. Setback guidelines include areas or conditions that can lead to an abatement, such as school buffer zones, so within 150 feet of schools, blocking the public right away, which includes streets, medians, sidewalks, trails, or city facilities, and presenting a serious health and or safety condition based on risk assessments, such as fire danger or vehicle pedestrian danger. 
Currently, residents can report encampments that are in violation of the setback guidelines mentioned by emailing beautifysj at sanjoseca.gov. The Beautify SJ and campaign management team will launch an online intake form that residents will be able to use to report encampments coming this fall. As mentioned by our CalSTRANS partners, we also have interagency coordination. The Beautify SJ interagency team coordinates contracts and services to maintain clean waterways, highways, and neighborhoods with interagency partners listed on the screen. Um, through um, Beautify SJ, it's aimed at keeping San Jose clean by providing cross-jurisdictional coordination around trash, blight activities, and ensuring good communication with and response from external partners, such as the one listed on the screen. That includes Caltrans, Caltrain, Santa Cla uh, Clara County um, Valley Water District, the county itself, uh, PG&E, uh, VTA, and the Union Pacific Railroad. Again, if you have any questions, uh, please put them in the Q&A. Uh, we'll be happy to answer them. And if you would like to contact, um, you can contact our Beautify SJ team at beautifysj at sanjoseca.gov or visit our website, beautifysj.org. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, uh, Daniel and Elizabeth, uh, for that overview of Beautify SJ. Um, next, I want to introduce our last few guest speakers from the Santa Clara County Consumer and Environmental Protection Agency. Um, we'll share more on the three programs housed within SEPA. Um, and I want to introduce Vanessa Marcadejas, Program Manager with the Watershed Protection Division, uh, Bill Puck, uh, Billy Puck with the Program Manager with the House and Hazardous Waste Division, and Michelle Young. Uh, Senior Program Analyst with the Integrated Waste Management Services Division. Please take it away. Okay, is the presentation showing up okay on the screen? Not yet. Not on Not our yet. end. Okay. One more. okay, there we go. I think we're good. There we go. All right. Good evening, everybody. I want to uh, say thank you to Roy Tongalava and Senator Cortesi for uh, allowing us to speak today in the town hall meeting. Um, my name is Vanessa Marcadeus. I oversee the county's uh, Watershed Protection Division and Integrated Waste Management Division. And uh, today I'm joined by my colleagues, Billy and Michelle, to share information on the county's waste management related program. And our environmental programs and services, um, we are known as the Consumer and Environmental Protection Agency, um, SEPA for short. We house a tremendous amount of wonderful environmental programs and uh, they're all listed here. The Department of Agriculture, uh, they serve local businesses and they protect public health and the environment and they promote a wholesome and ample food supply in the county. And we have an amazing animal services, very state of the art, best in the nation facility and crew um, that handle animal care and control, adoption, spay and neuter services, fostering and rehoming, uh, integrated waste that manages franchise agreements and incorporated Santa Clara County and garbage and recycling services. Uh, the household hazardous waste division, um, which oversees a safe and proper disposal of unwanted and hazardous household products. Vector Control District, uh, they detect and minimize vector uh, borne illnesses and uh, diseases. They abate mosquitoes, provide other wildlife and vector services. And then finally, our Weights and, Man uh, weights and Measures Department that protect buyers, sellers, and consumers and all uh, monetary transactions that use weights, measures, or counts. Um, I'm uh, going to kick it off to my colleague, Billy, to talk about the HHW program. And then uh, that will be followed by Michelle to talk about integrated waste. And I'll finish up with Watershed Protection Division um, items. Vanessa, did you want me to go ahead and get started with integrated waste? Looks like that uh, might be what's next. Uh, yes, please. Uh, can you? That's awesome. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Can you see it on yeah. the screen? Awesome. Okay. Thank you so much. No, we're all good. We work as a team, we're flexible with whatever uh, order things come in. So um, as Vanessa said, thank you so much for having us and uh, good to be here virtually. Um, I did wanna say that I was really happy to hear 
um, Senator Cortese's message about um, linking climate and beautification. I think that's one of the opportunities that's taking place right now in the solid waste sector. So uh, as Vanessa said, the county manages a variety of programs um, that both uh, support unincorporated service areas as well as coordination with the other cities throughout the county. So on the contracted services that we have, um, I'll show you a map in just a second, but uh, we focus on contracting for unincorporated service areas for garbage, recycling, yard waste, and food waste collection, as well as bulky goods and neighborhood cleanup, so special, special pickup. So all the cities in the county um, are focused on these services to make sure that um, residents and businesses have ways to get waste into its highest and best use through recycling and composting. And so um, are working very hard to make sure that um, everybody has the right containers at their service site to do regular weekly collection but then also providing services such as bulky good pickups for couches and, and furniture and other large items to make sure those don't get dumped um, anywhere that they uh, will not be uh, taken to their highest and best use. Um, the, the cities all provide uh, various neighborhood cleanup services as well. So I'm gonna mention this several times and that is that we coordinate um, at reducewaste.org, which is a website that'll have service specifics for any city that you live in throughout Santa Clara County. So you can go to that site, click on your city and see exactly the curbside services that are provided. You may have been hearing about SB 1383, which is new um, landmark legislation that's just been brought out by the state starting in January. And that requires mandatory collection of organic materials, including yard trimmings and food waste. Um, this is a new um, mandatory uh, requirement and all cities in Santa Clara County have implemented ordinances that require the collection of these materials on a regular basis. But the big change is those materials um, need to get diverted from the landfill. So in some cities, you'll see the food getting collected in the green cart or the yard waste cart. And in San Jose, that material stays in the garbage cart, but it's being sorted behind the scenes. So it never ends up in the landfill where it would create methane, which is a very powerful greenhouse gas. So again, we're keeping litter off the streets and making sure it goes to the right place, but also protecting the climate through these programs. Um, so the county is also involved in coordination um, with all the cities uh, throughout the county on 1383 activities and really cool innovations under the law, such as making sure that we collect edible food from businesses that were previously sending that either to composting or to the landfill. So uh, lots of great happening, great things happening under 1383. Vanessa, can we have the next slide? Thank you so much. Okay, excellent. So again, this is just a reference point um, to show the unincorporated service areas in Santa Clara County um, that are not represented by city by city um, garbage collection. So the areas in red, green, and blue represent um, the service areas that are managed by the county and all the other uh, cities in the county will have specific garbage services which you can find out about at reducewaste.org. All right, let's move on to the next slide. So, you know, each of the presenters is talking about ways to um, get involved and get the resources that you need uh, to, to get these services. So again, recycling right is, is really critical to keep those materials where they belong, either in a cart or um, even better getting them to, to be recycled. So go to reducewaste.org to find out how to recycle right in your city, which container everything goes in, what special services are provided. 
Another big initiative of the county is um, to help residents and businesses with reducing the waste of food, uh, food that would either go to composting or to the landfill to make sure that gets to people. And uh, reminding us all that about one quarter of all the food we buy as residents goes, uh, it, it gets wasted. So there's lots of tips if you go to reducewaste.org to um, preserving food, um, freezing, sorting your refrigerator, et cetera. Um, also uh, remember to donate large items or reusable items to uh, nonprofits that can support um, their uh, employee communities and, and raise money for the, for the uh, nonprofits. Um, using compost in your home garden or making it at home is a great way to use up your trimmings and, and food waste and also protect the climate by putting compost back into the soil where it sequesters carbon. Um, Santa Clara County is, is a supporter of the Green Business Program, so you can look for green businesses to support. Um, they are doing all the right things to protect the environment. You can also become a green business if you have, um, if you do run a business and you can find out about that at reducewaste.org. And again, on the edible food um, system, we really encourage people to find out what's needed at their local food bank. So Vanessa, if you move to the next um, page, we can talk about where you can find out about all these cool things that help to leverage solid waste and climate protection. So I've said that the reducewaste.org is your hub to find um, a lot of these things all in one place find out what's happening in your city and the exact services provided, find out how to um, find a home composter or become a home composter, uh, find a green business, et cetera. You can go to Love Food, Food Hate Waste to see videos on um, what to do with that avocado that's gone black. I can tell you the chocolate mousse on there is fantastic. So they can help you with reducing food waste and and really saving money and, and eating the food that you buy. Um, RecycleStuff.org is at San Jose State University, and that's a great source for hard to recycle items like what to do with window blinds and odds and ends that uh, may have a great home but uh, might not be picked up in your curbside program. So they not only have a searchable database, but they have real live people that answer a hotline and they will help you get your materials to the right place and, and avoid uh, having them end up in the waterways, on the streets, et cetera. And again, if you go to Second Harvest of Silicon Valley, you can see that they always have a where are you needed most uh, page and you can find out about how to volunteer to make sure that food gets to people and not to the landfill. All right, back to you, Billy. Hi everyone, my name is Billy Puck. I'm the Hazardous Material Program Manager for the Household Hazardous Waste Program in the county. So what is Household Hazardous Waste? Um, household Hazardous Waste is basically a discarded item. Um, commonly, you can found from the household. Um, they can be corrosive, flammable, toxic, or reactive. Uh, common example you're gonna see is the bleach. Uh, that has a battery in your car, gasoline or diesel fuel you put in the jug, gardening chemical and the pool chemicals. About our HXW program, uh, we serve 15 jurisdictions except the city of Palo Alto because they have their own uh, program running. We serve uh, 2 million residents with a diverse communities uh, we have two permanent facilities in the county, one in the um, San Jose and one in San Martin. And we usually operate 10 temporary collection event um, or drop off event um, at the various cities uh, throughout the counties. And if you want to participate and get more involved, um, that's our main website. And also we have a QR code for the convenience but make sure every time when you browse our website, call us for any questions you have. And we encourage you to make an appointment because that is where you can actually come to our facility and drop it off. We don't list the, the facility online uh, because we don't want to get 
uh, illegal dumping too. So now we turn to Vanessa. Okay. Hello, everybody. I'll be talking about the um, litter related reduction activities uh, from the watershed protection side of the house. Yeah. So about the Watershed Protection Division, um, we protect the creeks and rivers of the San Francisco Bay and Monterey Bay, and this is keeping pollution out of our waterways through various activities that we've um, had in place for years. Uh, I do want to stress that we oversee unincorporated county, um, and our driver is the Clean Water Act of 1972, which seems like so long ago. Um, but that act actually required municipalities to get permits to be able to discharge in the waterways. And those permits include a variety of programs that we have to implement, uh, policies that we have to implement, community outreach, uh, outreach uh, cleanups, uh, internal and external partnerships, which I'll get into in a moment. So the watershed protection programs and activities, uh, the permits that the county holds, um, our jurisdiction spans uh, for North County Unincorporated, which is everything north of Cochrane Road and everything south of Cochrane Road, which is a separate permit and uh, overseen by the Central Coast uh, Water Board. And so these are just the different programs that we have in place as a part of those permits. And every city in Santa Clara County has the same permits and also implements, uh, implements these various programs. Um, I won't go over all of these, but the two that I do want to focus on is the community outreach that we have and trash load reduction goal. Um, we have a, a large amount of community outreach uh, activities that we hold regionally. So we do work with an organization or a collective um, called SCAVERP, which is a Santa Clara County Urban Runoff Pollution Prevention Program. That's a bit of a mouthful, but um, these are the cities getting together, the city of San Jose, Milpita, Sunnyvale, and the county and everyone else to discuss how are we going to further reduce the waterways from getting polluted? How are we going to implement more outreach activities, get outreach out to the res residents and really be the boots on the ground to um, uh, clean up ourselves. So we have uh, participated in creek cleanup events and um, just got our boots dirty to be able to remove these things from the waterways and keep things clean. So the watershed protection and litter reduction tie-in is a permit. One of the largest components of it is trash load reduction. And um, this is trash load reduction that's specific to uh, any litter or debris or material or um, uh, items such as liquids that can get into a storm drain. And I think there's a big misconception that anything that gets into a storm drain or storm drain inlet in the side of the street um, gets into a um, that gets processed at a wastewater facility, it does not. Um, it drains directly into a local creek and then eventually out into the bay. Um, but the permit, we have the trash load reduction activities that include uh, continuing to oversee the back ordinance, the polystyrene ordinance, um, creek cleanups, as I mentioned, and a lot of the creek cleanups are multi-jurisdictional. We'll partner with the Valley Water District, um, City of San Jose, we've met with them on shared jurisdictional um, areas as well to really plan these out and discuss what we can do in the future and see how effective our efforts are. Um, a lot of these are based on data modeling and studies and field assessments. So we work with um, consultants and uh, with experts within each jurisdiction on where is this trash occurring? Why is it occurring? What can we do to remove it? And are those actions helpful? Or how can we improve them in the future? Um, we also have trash capture device installations and maintenance, so they're hidden. You can't really see them from the street, but in each of the storm drain inlets, there are trash capture baskets that once uh, there's a storm event and um, any type of debris, whether it be leaves or material, flow into the drains are actually captured and filtered, um, which helps um, clean the water before it gets to a local waterway. We definitely don't do this alone. We have a number of partnerships that we have. Um, we collaborate with county departments. Department of Environmental Health, Facilities and Fleet, uh, Roads and Airports, Parks and Recreation Department, um, and cross collaboration on where are these materials, uh, where are they frequently occurring, um, and just tag teaming on how to remove them, clean them up. Um, I mentioned the Santa Clara Valley Urban Runoff Pollution Prevention Program. Uh, we take a lot of collaborative approaches and um, uh, uh, future strategies that we can plan out for um, the next five years, even 10 years. So. It's a really great effort to work with everybody as a team. Um, Caltrans and City of San Jose already mentioned that we work with each other. We get funding from Cal Recycle in the state. Um, we have 
uh, cooperative agreement that we've worked with Caltrans and the San Jose Conservation for to clean up litter and debris on the side of the roads. And we do um, have a long-standing relationship with um, EOA through the Eisenberg and Olivieri Associates Consultants. So they are um, uh, environmental health and uh, engineers that help us with the data modeling just to make sure we are cleaning up the areas that need them the most and um, where we could uh, do future cleanups. Now, how to participate and get involved. There's quite a bit of things in this area. Um, National River Cleanup Day, some of you have already participated in this. It's already passed, I didn't put the date in here, but this is an annual event where you can sign up and volunteer to go to cleanup locations that have been known to have trash and different debris. Um, September 17th, which is this weekend, is Coastal Cleanup Day. Um, you can visit the Valley Water District um, website or the um, County Parks and Recreation website uh, to be able to get some more information on where those are going to occur and what time they're going to occur. Um, October 8th is the Day on the Bay Multicultural Festival happening in Alviso. Um, we'll be holding an educational and informational um, attend. We'll have some activities. Uh, we might, if you stop by, we might um, give you a pop quiz on watershed pollution prevention. Um, MyWatershedWatch.org. This is the collective suburb website on resources um, for the community. You can get car wash discount coupons. Um, it's actually much more um, uh, environmentally friendly to wash your car at a commercial car wash where the water is recycled versus washing your car in the driveway, which that water would flow into the storm drain. Um, we have many, many volunteer opportunities with the county through the parks uh, website. And um, one thing that we're really excited about and always trying to get um, more interest in is the county internship program. Um, we have county internships for almost every county department, uh, level one to five, up to folks that are in high school, uh, in college, folks that have graduated and, and continuing their studies. And we do continuing internships within the Consumer and Environmental Protection Agency in, C in CEPA. And I'm um, happy to report that uh, the, the students just um, really get immersed in the work and they get to learn a lot that some of them actually continue to, to stay with us um, as uh, full-time employees. So that's been wonderful. Um, Reporting with the discharges or legal dumping. This is the one that we probably get the most questions about. Uh, so on our county website, which is linked here and also at the end of our slide, um, uh, there's ways that you can give us a call. If you see an illegal dumping, um, you can give us a call or report it through a form on our website. Um, you can also find information if it's not an unincorporated county, um, who to call uh, within your jurisdictions to be able to report in legal dumping. So we could uh, log it and handle it and get it cleaned up for you. And then this, or um, actually our contact information, you can reach out to uh, us directly. And I, I see Roy, you know, we're a little over time. There's so much to talk about and um, exciting stuff. So I'll, I'll kick it back to you. Awesome. Thanks so much, Siba. Thank you, uh, Vanessa, Michelle, and Billy uh, for that great overview of each of those programs. Um, and so folks, we are a bit we're, we're over time, unfortunately, so we will have time for maybe one or two questions uh, quickly. So I'll turn it over to Zach uh, for that Q&A. Awesome. Thank you, Roy. And thank you, everyone who submitted questions. Uh, sorry, we won't be able to get to all of them. But our first one is, uh, how, do all, uh, how do all of your agencies prioritize urgency for encampments and litter on your jurisdiction? And how do you decide to allocate your time and resources as a result? Um, and so we could start off with Caltrans on that one. Hi, I am also joined with uh, by the region manager that provides maintenance support for Southwest. And I want to allow him an opportunity to grab this one. Thank you. Um, so we get customer service requests um, and we go out and physically inspect areas uh, for the encampments. We'll go out with CHP, walk the area and see what, what's present. Are there a lot of fuels? Are there honey oil labs? Are there meth labs? Um, you know, these high priority items that are, are safety issues. People tapping into 480 electrical, 
you know, a lot of fuels present as far as propane tanks stored in a hazardous manner. So we, we physically go look, um, we get CSRs, we physically inspect, um, and we prioritize in that way. I saw a similar question about graffiti um, and the superintendents and supervisors are inspecting their areas on a weekly basis. I'm out there on the right of way. Um, so we all inspect the area and prioritize these things in, in that way um, and, and allocate resources in that way. Now, there are other things that we take care of that factor into that as far as Leah mentioned before, guardrail, potholes, fencing, and those items come into play too for the area supervisors when they are prioritizing things. Do you have anything to add, Leah? I think you 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 covered it. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Caltrans and uh, Beautify SJ. Do you guys um, have uh, an answer to that one as well? Yeah, I can answer that one. Um, so for Beautify SJ, we do have our encampment management um, team, which um, when we get a report of an encampment um, or just in general encampments throughout the city, oh, we do service an average of um, things between 185 to 200 encampments throughout San Jose. So um, the encampment management team does go out um, just to um, see the encampment site and see what services are needed at that specific site. Um, sometimes um, the service that's needed is trash pickup services. So then they'll enroll that site into um, weekly trash pickup services um, if or they'll enroll them into the cash for trash program as well. Um, so one of those two trash service programs, um, if it's needed, then they'll move into an escalated cleanup, um, which is then um, sizing, sizing down the size of the encampment. So keeping them in that 12 by 12 foot area, um, picking up trash and debris outside of that 12, and 12 by 12 foot area. Um, and then now uh, just connecting with the residents and sharing um, the good neighbor rules with them. So uh, making sure that they know about the setback guidelines. They can't be within, for example, 150 feet of schools um, or blocking a public right away. Um, so making sure that they know those guidelines um, to be able to stay within the encampment, um, making sure that they receive um, trash bags, that they're aware of when the trash is getting picked up at that site weekly by our team. Um, and then also connecting them to other resources. Um, sometimes we connect them to um, outreach teams that go out um, if that's needed or uh, they're looking for resources such as housing. Um, and if needed, then they'll move into an abatement. So um, after the trash collection and then um, also the escalated cleanups, um, if the encampment is still um, within that setback guideline violation, then um, it will get cited for abatement. Um, and that's kind of the process that the team goes through. Um, and uh, that's just how they prioritize. Um, they pursue trash services, then move into escalated cleanups and then abatement, just depending on the site and what, what are the services needed at that specific location. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, and Sipa, do you guys have anything to add briefly or I can move on to our final question real quick? Yeah, I can just add uh, very briefly, just on the more kind of general um, litter reduction side. So in addition to the cleanups that I mentioned earlier in the cross-jurisdictional planning, uh, we have quite a bit of data that helps us plan out um, which areas from a waterway trash perspective has low, medium, or high trash areas that we can target. And so annually, sometimes up to twice a year, we do field on-land visual trash assessment. So this could be um, driving through a neighborhood. This could be um, walking with field staff just to see where these areas are concentrated. And then we then map them, have that data, we color code it, and then we tag team with the other agencies to be able to see if we have shared resources to handle that litter management or if we um, will uh, do it solo ourselves with our consultants. So just very quickly wanted to add that those are ongoing and have produced amazing data for us to be able to very specifically target where we need to clean. Awesome, thanks so much. And uh, we're gonna have to do just one final question. Uh, and this one is for SEPA. Uh, for your uh, watershed protection program, what current initiatives um, are there to keep our waterways and creeks clean? 
and what different measures are in place to make sure that they stay clean? That's a really great question. There's so much to talk about, but let me see which one I want to focus on. So um, there, um, uh, in addition to the outreach, the cleanups, the public education, um, we do have other um, areas that we um, uh, work in to keep our waterways clean. One of them would be in development projects, for example. If we have development projects in the county, we do have our um, inspectors trained to be able to identify, is a construction site being managed? Are we having runoff issues? Do we have erosion control issues? And we also have um, capital improvement projects that we also work on. So for example, in addition to trash capture devices, and we also um, are able to build green stormwater infrastructure or biotreatment um, uh, uh, projects in the ground to be able to capture stormwater runoff, then it have filtered, and then you have much more cleaner water getting into the storm drain uh, and then into the, the waterway. So um, uh, that's what I, I'd like to focus on. These are continuing. Um, we have some coming projects in the future to be able to do more cleanups and um, also want to extend some of the partnerships which we're currently negotiating right now with the other agencies that you've heard about to be able to um, uh, part uh, more boots on the ground resources to get the work done. Awesome, thank you so much. Uh, one second, double checking. And I believe it's sadly um, we will not have any time to do any more questions, but I just wanted to say thank you to all the other people who submitted questions, uh, like Alex, uh, Alice, Ken C, Sandeep C, Ron R, Daniel H, Daryl O, Leah T, Lynn L, Todd H, Gerald C, Ruth C, Todd L, Lucia C, Karen R, Peter D, Chris G, Alma G, Loretta D, Katya uh, I, and um, I believe that's all. So thank you guys for your questions. We will try and follow up with you if you had left our contact information. And thank you so much for submitting your questions. Awesome, thank you, Zach. Uh, and apologies to everyone again. Uh, we aren't able to, to answer all of your questions here, but I do wanna remind folks uh, to follow up with our office and a live or a recording of this webinar will be available uh, for a later viewing uh, on our website as well as our Facebook page. So if you want to, again, uh, look over some of the presentations, uh, if you're interested in reaching out or for contact information, be sure to give that uh, recording uh, a view. Um, in closing, on behalf of Senator Cortese in our office, we want to give a special thank you to our panelists from Caltrans, Beautify SJ, um, and the Santa Clara County SEPA for joining us this evening and for your leadership in your work uh, to bring resources and support services to families and neighborhood communities in our district. Um, with that, um, I appreciate you all joining us and I wish you all a safe and good evening. Good night, everyone.